what this looks like as well. So that's it here. And as you can see, I, I then have to find the Magic Origins logo and I have to do some work on it to take the background out so that it's transparent because logos that are posted on the net aren't like this. They're not like if you look at it like this, see how there's nothing behind it. So I have to go through and take out that stuff, which is pretty easy in Photoshop these days. And then I have to get the LR logo that you see down here. I, I made that and uh, made it a little bit less transparent so it's not just super you know, blocky and bold and then get everything sized up to be the background. So that takes a while to get all of this done and get it the right size and, and all that. And then I export that and I bring it into here and then this becomes the background which is this main bar you see here and then I put the podcast in down here and you can see on the side that this is us talking you can't hear it but and then and then the the one of the miserable parts about this um, just as far as what I have to do is I need to get all of the card images and there's no easy way to do that there's not like a website that you're just like, I'd like all the card images. It doesn't work like that. So you have to go to gather magic cards that info. And again, you can't just download them like that. So like I can show you what it looks like when I do it. So like if I go to gather, for example, I can go to origins and bring up some cards and then I put it in a visual spoiler mode. And what you can do is you can just grab these images. So like I'll, you know, make a folder or whatever and then put them in there. But I have to do it one at a time because you can't grab multiples. Like it won't, it'll just take the one that you pick. So I have to go like drag, 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 drag like that. And then eventually I get them all um, into folders that look like this, white, blue, black, like that. But the problem is, is that they're not the right size because if you just put those files as they sit into this, they'll be very small. They'll be like this big. And that's not big enough, you know, for when you're watching on YouTube, you want to get a nice big picture of it so you can see the card and read it and stuff. So that means I have to resize every single one. Um, and then what I do is I use a, a program called Lightroom which is one that I use for my photography stuff. And I import all the pictures into that. And in this, I'm more comfortable, so I can, uh, I can resize these easier. Like here's some, some watch pictures I was taking at one point, and then... <laughs> Who wants to call that guy? Anyway, but I put them into here and then and then I can batch resize them all at once or not all at once but close to all at once to get them to the right size. So then they end up in a in another folder. And then I import those folders into here. And then I finally have them like this where I can just drag them down and, and put them in. And then like I said, each one of these things is its own uh, image. And then I just need to find where it is on here that we're at. Cause the whole thing is actually very long. It's, you know, do, 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 all the way to the end. You can see how it looks. If I zoom out, this is what the, each picture looks like. They're very, very small. And then I have to place them in. So by the end of it, there'll be a whole bunch of these block things along the top. And then I have to export it, which takes a decent amount of time. Even on a good computer like mine, it takes a while to export a, a long video. This plugin will help me. Ooh, I like this. Give me it. And then, uh, let's see, one more match going, so that's good. And then, uh, and then I go through and just have to basically listen to the podcast again. So that takes another two or three hours, uh, depending on how long the show is. And then export it. And then I have to upload it to YouTube, which takes a while. And then YouTube usually wants to process it for a while. And then it finally goes live. So ultimately, it's a lot of work and it's pretty time consuming. 
um, it's there is a decent amount of the time consuming part though that isn't me actually doing stuff, so it's not that bad. Um, and I actually kind of like it. Like it's fun to work on this stuff. Um, you know, anyway, it's just, you know, doing the whole, like, oh, I get to resize 300 images. Like, that's just boring. You know, it's just like dragging and doing stuff like that, but you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, the video editing program, it's, uh, Photoshop, it's Adobe Premiere. That's a program this is. I'm okay in it. I mean, you know, you talk to like anybody who's like a really good person in this and I'm looking to get better. I've been taking some online, I wouldn't call them classes, but you know, tutorials, I guess would be a better word trying to get better at this stuff, but it, um, but you know, you get the guys like, you know, like Sean from walking the planes and, uh, Graham from loading ready run. And like, they can, they're just wizards with the thing. Um, and I'm not as good. So yeah, LSV, <laughs> LSV puts in a good amount of work, but it's not on this type of stuff. Yeah, I thought about that, but having somebody else do it is problematic because if they stop doing it, then it gets awkward and, you know, cause like then like it, it's hard for me to go back and do it. I don't know. It just ends up being tough. Yeah. The problem with writing down timestamps is that I edit the, the podcast and if I take out anything in between, then it's all gone anyway. We're working on it, Nova. Um, you know, I, there there are ways to do it, but they all have to be done on Efro's end, and he doesn't have that software. Like, it's expensive stuff, and I have it for the podcast, but, you know, I, I don't expect him to buy, you know, expensive uh, uh, software just to record a, a funny, you know, video or song thing or whatever. So, I don't know. There might be a way to do it, though, that's easier. There's There's some cheap stuff that we can probably use. We just haven't really looked into it. How it works with the windows zooming in and out of the... Oh, you mean the... Like this? I like that. It shows me where it's going. Yeah, I, I do that, Cafe. Uh, I do it in, in Lightroom, but it's the same thing. Machete. LSV does work there. Has he announced if he's working on the Bethesda game? I don't think he's announced that. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not. I'm, he can't really talk about what he works on, um, you know, until the stuff gets released, until it gets going. So he doesn't usually talk about that. I don't know a game he's working on. Yeah, Audacity's free and can do it. I, I, I know, but it's, it's a lot of work. Oh, he is? Okay, yeah, if he said that, then he is. I, I don't actually know the answer. Oh, cool. That's cool. Elder Scrolls. Yeah, we know one of the um, guys that works for Bethesda, Pete, and he's great. Uh, he's a longtime listener of the show. I've had a chance to meet him in real life as well. Super cool guy. I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, hey, I know that company. Yeah, hardware and exactly. Like, it's not that it's impossible, but it's like I'd have to do all this over the internet and it's like, eh, whatever. I'm going to see if I can find a snack real quick. I'll be right back. Looks like we got a little time. We're back. No, it's not a cubicle. <laughs> it does look like one. 
But I've actually, here I can, there you go. Does it look less cubicle like now? I've got these things that I hung up and I've got the truth behind me here. And this is, uh, that's a piece of magic artwork that my friend Inkwell Looter did. No, I don't read that much, Hedge. Um, not, certainly not as much as Luis. The thing about Luis is that he reads super fast, and I read really slow. Oh, yeah. That's the original The Truth, the one from Vegas. Yeah, Luis reads a ton. I mean, when he has time, that guy can read infinite. But I do read. I've read some books. I don't know. I just read so slow. I don't know why. Oh, that's the truthiest. He's right here. Look, he's still wearing his uh, his favorite clothes. His Vegas gear. Yeah, this thing I got from Looter Sweep. You guys got to check this out. It's their mirror. <laughs> How cool is that? What kind of reading do you like, Hedge? Is it like fantasy stuff or? Yeah, he talked about Blink. Um, he actually recommended Blink to me, and I read it. It was good. All right, we're ready to rumble. Let's make some Eldrazi. Who are we playing? Neil Oliver. Can we keep this on the draw? We get Frantic Search. Try to make a uh, channel happen. I'm going to keep it. No! <laughs> this is just great. He's going to laugh. Yeah, I think our deck mole's bad, too. <laughs> we got a lot of green sources. We could easily just go green source, green source. But he doesn't know that looking at it. <laughs> yeah, streamer showdown. Yeah, that's pretty smart. That's the only cat. Oh, yeah, just doing it. <laughs> Boom. Force LRR to play against us. Yeah, we could play against him if... Uh, if they want to play. Yeah, that's true, Hedge. You, you That has summed it up exactly. Generally, I'm pretty straightforward, you know, but I'll go deep, man. I, I have no problem just going completely nuts. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to eat in front. Oh, no. Looks like Neil brought the real ancestral here. Yeah, so I don't mean to eat in front of the mic. I needed a snack. I, I realized I was getting a little spacey there. These cards are phantom, yeah. Oh, it's okay. I use a Rode. It's called a Rode Podcaster. It's a USB mic. 
Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, I guess. <laughs> Got to have a good sound setup for the podcasts and the videos and stuff, you know. Translates right into streaming. I'm going to grab a water. What did he do? Brainstorm? All right, make sure I'm not running over anything. Well, so far I'm jealous of his deck here oh yeah he went deep neil's not not going deep <laughs> uh-oh i think i'm going to image this What do you guys think about imaging this thing? <clears throat> My gut tells me that he's not going to have many creatures. Oh, this is real. <laughs> this is very real, Ephra. <laughs> I-Fro. I don't know what, the, what he's doing. No, this is this deck is I mean look at it. Basically unbeatable. We can't get brainstormed out. Okay. Thanks, River Birdman. It's a pretty nice combo. Guess I'm just going for it. <clears throat> don't think my life total is going to matter hugely here. I also don't think my opponent's is going to be huge. So I think maybe I just pay for as much of this channel as I can. Or as much as this Kozilek. Suppose I could have cards I'd want to cast afterwards, though. Yeah, I'll probably just do it that way. Put this guy on the stack. <laughs> Ah, 
Let's see here. I could Eureka in Ulamog, Shieldred, and Awakening Zone against probably not a whole lot from our opponent. Or I could wait for Ancestral Vision and then do it next turn. Uh, I think I'll just put out Lethal, though, and kind of make my opponent have it here. We're going off. <laughs> this is just stupid. Oh, you know what? I should cast Ulamog, right? Oh, no. Uh, I could have. I could have cast Ulamog and left myself at a few life points there. And then I get to blow up something. Sheldock Isle or whatever. And I guess I wouldn't have get to do that anyway. Yeah, I should have considered that. Um... Because I needed 11 life and I had... So I could have done that. I don't know. Either way, I'm I'm putting out near lethal here. I wonder if there's any risk. Yeah, I think I probably should have just cast Ulamog. I can take my opponent off of a... Uh, off of a permanent, basically. And I don't think my life total is that important. Getting out Shieldred's just not important here either. So I, I think I should have done that, but I didn't. So here we are. Um, and, I, and I can't, right? Like now it's too late. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to live with that. Get in the zone. You get to play a land. Shieldred. We are definitely all in. I have no idea how Storm and Scepter work. I suppose they do. But yeah, I should have just cast Ulamog and left myself at three life. And then blown up Sheldock Isle or Isochron Scepter or something like, or even just like, I think any permanent I blow up is probably fine there. This is still sweet though. I mean, we have still set up. I mean, look, it's not like it's a disaster. I just think that that would have been a better play than what I... Because the chance that my opponent deals with one of these creatures isn't that high. And hitting once with either of these two should be about it. Yeah, so it does work. He might brain freeze me. We've got 25 cards in our library. And no, There's some storm count here, two or three. I guess he's going to get a decent chunk here, but I don't think it'll be lethal. Anyway, we don't have anything else to think about at this point. So we're just going to say whatever. Storm does work. So there, I think there was four spells. Okay, so that puts us to 10. Sacrifice a creature, you. It's pretty reasonable to assume our opponent doesn't have any creatures. What is this, like Time Spiral? Turnabout. Okay, so we're dead because he could have turnabouted to not die. But we are going to lose Yogmoth's Bargain. Man, his deck is sweet too. Yeah, so if I would have played Ulamog... Would have been in a much better spot. Also, how unlucky we drew both of our Eldrazi. Very dead. All 
All right. I don't want to show them those last few cards. Um, so what do we want to do here? We want to cut bribery. Cards like Show and Tell and uh, and and Eureka should be especially good here, though. Crows and Grip can probably come in. It's going to hit something every single game. Cut a spell skite, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's PC only. You can play it on a Mac. I'm playing it on a Mac right now, but you have to run it through a PC to do it. Hey, John Q player. What's up, man? What do you guys think about Stunted Growth? That could come in. I could even see a card like Lightning Greaves coming in just to try to get, you know, basically try to get us a turn up on our opponent who's really not going to be interacting with this type of stuff. And cut mana leak as well. It doesn't seem very good against them. All right, let's try to go big here. That's a mulligan. That's a keep. Shieldred is not good enough, but we need stuff to put in. Inquisition for survival. All right, that's pretty good, but we've got a reload plan coming and we're just a few lands away from trying to get Ulama again. Yeah, but that wasn't quite big enough for me, unfortunately. All right, tick tock. I hope we don't top that Kozilek here. Just gonna wait. We get Ancestral next turn and <clears throat> a Eureka could be a lot better at that point. It's not bad for four mana, but our opponent gets to dump their whole hand too. I mean, of any, you know, permanence. So I'm just gonna wait till we get Ancestral Vision. And then we'll fire it off. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Thinking we just want to show and tell. Doing, doing Eureka just lets our opponent just dump. It's not as good. I don't think Stunted does anything great here, right? Like they just 
choose three cards that they don't care about. Okay, so we're getting Force of Willed. Now I would Stunted Growth, but instead, I'll play Rafelos. What got exiled? Turnabout. I did leave up Rafelos mana. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to Stunted Growth. This is basically a duress. I mean, it's obviously better than that, but... Yeah! Because we still had enough mana to, to get Emrakul into play, and then they only had... Or not Emrakul, but... Uh, Ulamog, and then they'd have the one turn to actually deal with it. All right. Run it back. Yeah, we can stun it and Eureka that turn. So it's basically like, here, counter this. And if you counter this, and then I play Eureka and you counter that, then I shake your hand, and you did good. Mm. Unexcited keep. Every turn, every game with this guy. Probably just going to take grip. This is a medium, medium to low keep. Not a big fan of this hand. But I liked it better when it had grip in it, because I could take him off of some some mana. But now I can't. <laughs> it just got a lot better. Two turns away from Emrakul, or from Ulamog. I keep saying that, but yeah, two turns away from Ulamog. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. Main phase using it leads me to believe that either they're going to try to go off in some way this turn, but more likely that they needed blue mana or a land drop. Bolting Rafelos would be fine here, too. With me, I mean... <clears throat> Let's see what we draw. Show and tell. That works. We can still uh, Eureka after this if it gets countered by a force. Yeah, come on, have no good permanence. <laughs> uh, okay, we did it. We got Ulamog down. An opponent had stone nothing? That's pretty great.
Yeah, I agree that image should have been cited out. <clears throat> they can't copy anything that they're doing, and it rarely does anything great on our side. So I, I am with you on that. All right, so we still have Ulamog. You're telling me I still have Ulamog in my hand or on the battlefield. Is that the truth? He might have control magic, but he didn't play a blue source last turn, so he'd have to have blue source plus control. Actually, no, we already saw control magic, though we could have treachery or something else. Now, then I guess we get to put our phantasmal image to use. I mean, we can't beat everything, right? Like, if my opponent has, you know, ways to steal stuff or whatever. Mystical Tutor. Getting Yawgmoth's Will. Digging for Ancestral. Trying to use Ancestral here. Must be outs for my opponent. Seething Song. Okay, so they're just going off. All right, well, let's just sit back and watch the display here. Because there's nothing we can do now anyway. Yawgmoth's will. Diamond for blue. What? Uh, I want to watch this. Thank you. Well, here we go. Opponent gets to draw three cards with their ancestral and play a bunch of stuff from their yard. We're pro I would say our chances of winning are low, but I, I'm not going to figure it. I'm not going to sit here and go through every motion. I mean, if we get to hit with with Ulamog, then I figure we probably win. But right now, opponent has tons of extra mana going and gets to Brainstorm and Ancestral. So there's that. Does not have Brain Freeze yet. Can go get it. I don't know if they have enough. Remember, we've got another Eldrazi in our deck here. So let's see if he goes and gets Brain Freeze. Tendrils. All right, well, we are pretty dead then. I don't know what the storm counts at, but it's going to be, it's already going to be approaching enough here. Needs to be 10. Yeah, we're dead. Bummer. Because now Brainstorm as well. And there's Tendrils. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and even one to spare. All right. GG's. That was kind of fun. At least both of our decks got to do what they were trying to do. Uh, we got to put in an Ulamog, and he got to storm off. Um, I think I punted that first game, though, by not just playing Ulamog there. I think we would have won had I not done that. I'm not sure, but I think blowing up the, um, the Scepter means that our opponent would have to do basically that, would have to try to go off, and that would be a lot harder. Yeah, having Tendrils and Brain Freeze is pretty brutal. Um, you know, sometimes these Storm decks can only pick up one win condition, and then I think we're in a decent spot, right? Like, we're, we're not really going to get milled out. There are ways that it can happen, but it gets a lot more difficult uh, with an Eldrazi floating around in the library. Um, and then, like I said, I think if we get to turn Ulamog sideways once, then I think we win. Um, but... Yeah, our opponent was able to go off the turn after we did it. That's pretty sick. Yeah, LED, Yawgmoth's Will, plus Ancestral is gross. Um, let's see how everybody else is doing here. It looks like oh, they just got evened up at one game apiece with Loading Ready Run and Frank Lepore. Julian and David Levitt are, I believe, in the finals. 
Yeah, Yogwill's the nut. Oh, he had tendrils game one. Yeah, I guess that's another consideration that if he happens to have it and I decide to go for Ulamog, then he just casts like two spells and kills us, which would have done it. Ah, whatever. I don't think, I think that's a tough one for us. I and mean, we're not interactive. You know, if we go turn two channel out something big, then that's great. I love that our, uh, our put stuff into play. I mean, he didn't put anything into play. Like there's just no creatures in the deck. So that's pretty good. Oh, I didn't know Kenji was streaming. Eh, whatever. He's going to be in the thing later. Game one kills? Well, yeah, probably. Um, but it looks like these guys are still going, so I think I'm going to call it good for now, and I'm going to get cracking on this uh, video set review because uh, I do want to try to get as much of that thing done as possible before... Um, tonight. So I'm going to call it good for now, but, uh, thanks for hanging out guys. I had a good time on the, on the streamer thing. Our deck was pretty sweet. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, it was just super sweet. Actually. Look at this thing. <laughs> yeah, that deck is, it was super fun, but, uh, but that was cool. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I'll be, you know, streaming again. Maybe even tonight. I don't know. It depends on what the schedule ends up being. But 